So we're going to actually make a shoe out of a giant horseshoe nail for Charlie Horse. Um, so, I do a lot of uh, ornamental and sculptural stuff. I uh, do a lot of gates and railings, things like that for your home. We call it the bling or the jewelry for your house. Uh, but today we're working on something fun. Have any of you folks been able to go and check out the Punch and Judy show? Okay, so uh, 215 is the next show. Our good friend Brent is the puppeteer. And he has this beautiful mannequin named Charlie Horse. And it's a horse, so we're going to actually make a shoe out of a giant horseshoe nail for Charlie Horse. So, it's fun. That's the majority of why we do this. Enjoy. So, I started blacksmithing about 12 years ago, but funny enough, last weekend, I actually met the person who first showed me how to blacksmith at the Philmont uh, uh, Scout Ranch out in Raton, New Mexico. It was the summer I turned 18, we were just getting ready to ship off for basic training, and my Boy Scout troop went out there. And one of the camps we went to, there was a blacksmith shop. So I got to assist, and I got the bug, and I've been interested in it ever since. As soon as I got out of the Army, I started blacksmithing, and uh, started meeting really great folks across the state, southern Indiana, and started traveling around, taking classes, and it's something you're never done learning. So you're constantly meeting new folks and learning new techniques, taking classes. There's always a, a way to improve or learn more. So right now what I'm doing is I'm heating up this nail. It's very thin. So the heat is sucked out of it really quickly by the anvil. The anvil is actually a giant heat sink. So it pulls the heat out of the metal very, very quickly. But, I don't want to work this too cold or it'll start splintering and falling apart. So I've got to get it hot, work it very quickly, and get it back into the fire. And what I'm doing is I'm drawing it down. So it was already a point, but I want to refine that point just a little bit more. We're going to put a nice round on it. Now, it may look cold, but even in a black heat, it's still almost 500 degrees. It's still very, very hot, but it's not hot enough to move it. When you get the steel onto a nice red or orange heat, it's almost in a plasticine state, like working with clay. So you can move it and shape it. You obviously, you can't use your fingers, but that's why we have all the specialty shaped hammers and tooling. All of that allows us to basically pinch and mold the metal. And I think that's a more interesting way to look at it. A lot of people think of metal as very hard, very immovable. But when you get it hot, you literally are shaping it like clay. So if you look at some of the sculptures I've done over here, you know, you're trying to take something that's cold and heavy and hard and trying to make it look lifelike. You're trying to give it something that really gives it some character. Also, it's all interpretive, so you know, it's kind of pass fail. So we're going to start working this out. Now, there are several there's several parts to the anvil's anatomy. So does anybody know anything about anvils? Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? No? Okay. So this is a London pattern anvil. It's a Peterite. It weighs about 125 pounds. This is the first anvil I ever bought when I first started blacksmithing. And basically the anatomy is the face, you've got the shelf, and the horn. <clears throat> the face is where you do all of your forge welding. So these were made out of about five different pieces of wrought iron. They were all forge welded together, and the face was actually a piece of high carbon steel. It was forge welded on top. So that's why you've got that nice rebound. The shelf is just the wrought iron, so you can actually cut with a chisel 
uh, into that, and it doesn't matter. It's a sacrificial surface. But if you notice, there's no real rebound. The horn is used for shaping out, for drawing out. Um, it's just a really useful tool for bending. Uh, also, on the face, you've got these different you've got these different holes. So you've got a square hole, which is called the hardy hole, and you've got this round hole, which is called a pritchel hole. So the hardy hole holds all kinds of different tooling. This is called a hot cut. If I need to cut a piece of steel off, I get it hot in the fire, I bring it over to the hot cut, and I hammer it down onto this until it's almost all the way through. The pritchel hole is used for supporting when you're punching a hole through the steel. So back then they didn't have drills, everything was punched. So we would use different chisels to punch out a hole for your, your J-hook or something that needed to be nailed up. You would do that over the pritchel. So just a little bit of anvil anatomy for you. So we're going to go ahead and work this shoe around a little bit more. we have got to be very careful because it's super thin. <clears throat> It'll burn up very quickly. Um, a lot of people think you're melting the steel, and you're not. You're melting. You're not melting the steel. It will burn up. Though. We're burning uh, coal. Traditionally, this would have been charcoal. Europe was deforested three times over its history to provide charcoal for the blacksmithing industry. Everything was made by the blacksmith. The nails, the door latches, anchors, chain, all the hardware you can think of. It was all made by hand in a blacksmith shop very limited resources. Our shop here would probably be one of the fanciest blacksmith shops most of them had ever seen back in the medieval era. We're going to clean up that radius a little bit more. Patrick, we're at the Anvil site. There are some here made here in the United States. Um, Okay, so <clears throat> this is the basic general shape, right? It's it's a horseshoe for a marionette puppet, but it's fun. Now I've got something I can reproduce. So I've got the basic steps down. Now I can do these quicker, right? I can make a bunch of these so I can fill out my table and have things to sell. So you can see, I'm doing the first one, and I'll hand it around. So you do the first one, and then after that, okay, now let's pick it up. Let's put a couple on the fire. Let's work them out quicker. Because you're a production blacksmith, right? So. Typically, they would make nails in one heat. I say, 13-year-olds were making nails. Right. That's, that's no kidding. A lot of children were sold into indentured servitude working at the blacksmith shop. Apprentices. Apprentices, yeah. Uh, if anybody grew up on a farm, I'm sure they're very familiar with that, that whole mindset. So you saw me go slower the first time because I was talking to everybody. I was walking through the steps. I was doing the first one. Now let's see if I can do this in just two heats. So we get a little bit quicker. That's the second one. Now let's see if I can do it in one heat. I don't know. Give it a shot. Uh, 
What's that forge heating up to when you do that? Uh, roughly 2,000 degrees. Depends. This one's about 125 pounds. Um, I've got one that's 130 pounds and also another one that's 215 pounds. They go all around and do it at 1,000 pounds. So I, I heard somebody ask, what, what's the use for bigger anvils? Um, well, a really, I'm, I'm sorry, Mike, I don't mean to cut you off. I think it's a good question. All right, so we got that one in one heat. So you see how you can start picking things up and getting into production. Uh, one of the bigger uses for, uh, one of the points of having a bigger anvil is you've got a bigger face. So when I do a gate or a railing, I'm working with five and six foot long pieces of material and I've got a big power hammer. That's how I'm working everything out. But I have to straighten that. So my, my anvil at home, the face is a lot bigger and a lot flatter. So I can take a two foot heated piece of steel and set it on there and slowly take the twist and the, the taper out of it. Um, just because it's handmade shouldn't look like it's handmade. I really pride myself on my stuff looking like a machine made it. Um, sometimes that's nice, like the copper bracelets I did over there, they're just a ball peen texture, but I really try to get everything as flat and straight and true as possible. So a big flat anvil face is really nice for that. You've got something to, to handle a larger piece of steel and bigger forgings. Um, How much does that anvil This that one's 120. What's the other one? Uh, my big anvil is like 300 pounds. So it's it's probably you know over twice the size of this one. Um, folks, we appreciate y'all coming out. Feel free to pick things up, ask questions, and if you feel so tempted, please feed Tipsy. Once again, very very hungry. And today, for the very very limited time, if you make a donation, you get to ring our bell. That's only today and only this demo. It's really super special. But thank y'all, folks.